My name is Elf Lyons, I am 22. I work as an intern at Artsy Old Fire Station. I organise my own comedy nights under the guise of the secret comedians. And then on top of that, I, you know, work as an usher, do life modelling, anything to make my life easier to live on. <laughs> I decided I wanted to be a comedian when I was 15 and I remember always the different eyebrow expressions from parents. Some would be like, oh, that's really cool. And others would just be a bit, it was almost like pity. But um, I stuck to it and it just felt like a natural thing to do really. It was another skill. It was something else to be slightly frightened of and thus it was something my parents encouraged me to do. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me that swing. I genuinely don't know if there's anything that I deal with differently to boys in comedy. I suppose the only thing that I'd get that maybe they don't get is you get a group of girls who say, we never find women funny, but we thought you were really funny. Or, you know, a group of guys being like, yeah, you were really funny, and normally I didn't think women are funny. Anybody who says they don't find women funny, I'm like, well, go to a comedy gig maybe once or twice a week or a month, and you'll just see that actually as there are more women on the bill, that you will find one of them funny, like sense of humour is quite broad. Free comedy, sir. The most amazing night of your entire life. I promise I'm funny. I'd say when you go to somewhere like America, I feel like they're far more accepting. They've got so many big female comics on telly, like Tina Fey, for example, and all those who wrote for Saturday Night Live. I think maybe people just aren't used to it. Yeah, but we're getting better. There are more women becoming on panel shows now because feminism's become really like a right on thing again. People aren't afraid of the word. It's being discussed more. It's in the papers at the moment about how all women are just dominating the Edinburgh Fringe this year. And once people start going seeing comedy live more, they'll then understand, oh, actually, why aren't these comics that are amazing live not on the telly that I watch all the time as well? Funny Women's been going on for quite a while. I knew it was a cool competition to get involved in. I did like the idea of there being sort of a sisterhood in comedy. And it is overwhelming to think that I am in the final. Because I have never been a finalist of anything. <laughs> Except musical chairs. That is my mother. And that is also the woman who, when I got dumped, yes, I am over it. You know when you're dumped, you go home, you get picked up by your mum and dad. And your mum and dad are like, we love you and we feed you biscuits, we put you in bed. My mum and dad broke the golden rule of dealing with a daughter in a breakup. First thing my mum did, she was crying before I was. She picked me up in the Nissan, in the Nissan Micra, turned up at Crockham Hill Station, she went, oh, Emily, you are gonna be in so much pain. You went, Emily, this pain's gonna last about eight weeks. Possibly four. <laughs> He's like a potato, but with my face, okay? And my mum just turns to him and went, Oh, Jared, she's not going to kill herself, is she? <laughs> I'm in the car, and genuinely, my dad just went, No, she's too busy. <laughs> so sweetest thing like, Oh, this is nice. You're such a lovely audience. And this microphone is so loud. Shall I turn it down? I'll just do that. I mean, I'm so up in the grill with how this tech works. I think I've turned it off.